Welcome back to another episode of the AutoCoin Academy. Today we will be talking about fuel systems as well as some electrical components for the E30 S54 build. Just want you to quickly note on the diagram here on the top left we have the gas tank. Inside the gas tank is the fuel pump that goes to the fuel filter and the fuel pressure regulator regulates the amount of pressure or fuel pressure entering the engine any excess fuel pressure goes through the return line back to the gas tank the injector is there that atomizes the fuel and that gets combusted in the engine here is another photo of what the fuel pressure regulator looks like mounted in the vehicle and we will be assembling the fuel pressure regulator today. This unit I have is from AEM. I needed an adjustable fuel pressure regulator that would allow me to use uh, fuel pressure up to 60 psi which is a little bit higher than what most vehicles would use. I'll focus on this gauge here. This is a 100 psi gauge and the gauge just gets mounted on the front of the fuel pressure regulator. We'll be also be using a Teflon tape and the tape will help create a better seal between the threads. When using hoses it is important to use hoses meant for gasoline in this case. If you use a hose let's say for the coolant could degrade over time and create a very big problem in the engine bay. This particular hose we are using is uh, rated for gasoline. It is a 5 16 inside diameter. You can find what type of hose it is by reading the hose itself. This hose is also regulated for 225 psi which is well within the range of 60 for this engine. These are the fittings that we will be attaching onto the fuel pressure regulator. We will be adding Teflon tape between the silver and the gold colored fitting. It's important that we have uh, these tight on both the left side, the right side, and the bottom. On the top, there is another fitting to attach a hose. This hose will be attached to the engine vacuum and that will read the amount of engine load and that will uh, adjust the amount of fuel uh, entering the engine ever so slightly. Inside you can see a diagram of what the dimensions of the fuel pressure regulator, dimensions between the screws, dimensions of the regulator itself as well as the mounting bracket. So if you need to make any measurements beforehand there is that available to you. I am using two wrenches to tighten the gold fitting and the silver fitting together. It's important to get this as tight as you can to prevent any leaks very important you don't have any leaks especially when gasoline is involved. And I'm just grabbing two combination wrenches here and tightening them together. I apologize for having it off screen uh, slightly but you can see here this is what the fitting looks like with the Teflon tape. Notice that there is an O-ring uh, between the silver fitting and the fuel pressure regulator. I have marked here with the two red dots where I'm going to be mounting the fuel pressure regulator. I will need to drill two holes in order to do so. This is really the only place that I can mount it without having excessive length of hose and to drill the holes I will be using a drill and when using an electric drill 
important that all sources of fuel are far away from the drill itself. The fuel pressure regulator is a must-have item for any electronic fuel injection system. Without it, there would be too much fuel pressure build up behind the injectors and cause them to fail and you would need it there to allow enough buildup of fuel pressure for the injectors to work properly. I have now drilled two holes for the bracket for the fuel pressure regulator. I'm just going to quickly vacuum up any metal shavings. I have the fuel pressure regulator mounted right now and I'm going to show you now with the buildup of pressure we have it working properly. I need to adjust it slightly so it will go up to 60. It is adjusted with a small screw on the top. Now I will show you how to crimp wires. The connectors on the end of the wiring harness I got off eBay weren't uh, the best quality so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut them off and place these new connectors on the end of the wire. First of all we are going to use uh, wire strippers. Wire strippers remove the outer jacket or casing of the wire without cutting the wire itself. It is important to note that there are different sizes of wire and you should look at the different sizes on the wire stripper to make sure that the size of the wire matches the size of the hole on the wire stripper so you don't accidentally cut the wire or do not cut enough of the plastic off. I'm going to bunch the wires up together. I've not gotten into the habit of twisting the wires anymore. I just leave them straight. This is a different assortment of different connectors. You can see that they range in size as well as different ends. Different sizes also correspond with different colors. In this next photo there is a close-up of how the wire is crimped down onto the connector. This is the tool used for that. Notice that there is yellow, blue and red. Yellow being the biggest, red being the smallest and blue being in the middle. And this tool is the only tool you can use to get a secure connection. If you try using any kind of pliers, uh, that won't work as well. So we are going to put the wire in through the hole. Make sure that you can see the wire uh, sticking out just a little bit. And we are going to go to the yellow section of the crimping tool and we are going to place a couple crimps across the connector. You want to do more than one as it will provide more of a secure connection because sometimes the wire slips out and once you've already crimped down the connector you're going to have to grab a new one as you cannot reuse them. I've taken this photo from the engine bay looking inside the vehicle. I have highlighted with a red circle the ECU. I have placed the ECU in a cardboard box to isolate it from shorting against the body of the car. This is the additional fuse box that I have added to the vehicle. This will have the wiring for the ECU as well as any additional accessories such as the radiator fan. I have mounted it on the side of the passenger seat. These are fuses. They are rated in different amps, not volts. Higher the rating, the more power it will take to trip the fuse. When the fuse is broken, it will look something similar to this. There is a bridge that connects the left and right terminal together. 
and when it exceeds the rated amperage that part will essentially break and stop the circuit. That would be a good thing because it is a lot cheaper to replace a fuse than overloading the part that the fuse is trying to protect. That is all the time we have for today. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for our next episode on installing the drive shaft.